So let's talk about gameplay tags and why they can be very powerful in driving your gameplay in gameplay mechanics and puzzle solving. So before we go into how to create and add those tags, let's just see how, how they work. So I have a key and I have a door, a key and a door. And using gameplay tags, we can attach a key to a particular door in order for it to unlock. Now to begin with, the door will not open, even if I collect the keys, because they are not linked to them. However, if you look at this key here, this has a gameplay tag interact.gold key, and this has a gameplay tag interact.silver key. Now if I take this door, and I've created an unlock door gameplay tag, if I link this to the gold key, and if I link this door, its tag to the silver key. Now let's see what happens. So again, if I go, the door will not open. If I pick up the gold key, this door will open because it is linked. However, this door will still not open unless I pick up the silver key. And that's a very easy way to link items in puzzles. In addition, I can simply change what this key is by changing the gameplay tag. So I could turn this into a silver key just by changing the tag. Now, and this door will not open, but I can pick up this silver key that we just changed and use it to open that door. Again, this door is linked to a gold key, so neither key will be able to open it. So this is a very simple puzzle mechanic of keys and locked doors. And the way it works, if I walk you through it very simply, is in our main character, we have created a gameplay tag container. And this container can contain multiple gameplay tags. I've also added a, an interface through which a gameplay tag can be added or the gameplay tag container can be got hold of. And the way that works is when the interface call add gameplay tag arrives, it takes the tag container and it adds the tag to it. And when the interface call get gameplay tags is called, it simply sends a copy of the gameplay tag container. Now in terms of the key and the door, so the key is very simple. So there is a static mesh and there is a, a collision box. When the player overlaps the collision box, it checks to see is it the player character. If it is true, it calls the interface add gameplay tag. And it adds the gameplay tag that this key is associated with. And then it destroys itself. With the door, again, it's just a static mesh with a collision box. When the player overlaps the collision box, it checks to see it's the player. It gets the gameplay tags through the interface call and it checks to see, does the player tag container contain the gameplay tag needed to unlock this, unlock this door? If it is, then it just plays a sequence to open the door. So the way that the gameplay tag changes the mesh is very simple. If I go here and change it to the silver key, it will automatically change 
and it does that via the construction script. So it takes a gameplay tag and it runs a switch, which is actually very simple. Create the switch and just add another one and tick which tag you want it to be. If it's a silver key, it changes the mesh to the silver key mesh. If it's a gold key, it changes it to the gold key. And that allows you to, to drive what mesh is shown simply through a gameplay tag, either there or like we did earlier here. Now we have a gold key. So how do we create gameplay tags? Well, first of all, if we go to our settings, to our project settings, and we go here to gameplay tags, we can now find the gameplay tag manager. So what I did is I created a gameplay tag, gold key and silver key. Say for instance, we wanted to create a gameplay tag for different weapons. I would simply go here and in the name, I can write weapon and say my first weapon is a gun. And you'll get this warning because you do have to select the file in which the gameplay tags will be saved. So choose that, add new tag, and now I have a weapon gun. I can go here, and I can say add another sub tag automatically fills in the weapon and I could say sword. As these are hierarchical I could also add a sub tag another hierarchy to the gun. So weapon dot gun dot rifle. So I have three. The sword I could say weapon dot sword add sub tag dot samurai and you can have many of these hierarchies build them down and refine them to ever greater detail so that's one way of doing it the other way is by using gameplay tag tables so if we go and create our own gameplay tag table, which is just a data table. So let's close this. Let's just create a, we go to miscellaneous data table and we need to choose the structure. So we want ours to be gameplay tag table row. Select that. Let's call this DT. Let's say we want our gameplay tags for different teams based on colors. So data table, teams. Let's call it gameplay teams, gameplay tag teams. Now if we open that, create some more space. Simply let's add one there and we will have teams with different colors. So we will say team dot red. So that's our first gameplay tag. We can just duplicate this and change that to team dot blue and duplicate that and we can choose team dot orange. <clears throat> now if we go back to our, we'll save it, go back to the settings, project settings, gameplay tags, and the gameplay tag table list. So I'll press the pause button and we can choose our data table gameplay tag teams. And now if we go to our gameplay tag manager they've been added team blue, orange, red, and they've been, this represents where they have been stored or saved. So that's a second way of doing it.
The third way of doing it is by importing tags from the config. So this is already ticked true as default. And if you read what it says, it will Im import tags from the INI files in the config slash tags folder. So in order to set this up, we need to first of all go to our project folder. As it says in the config slash tags. So here is our config. If we open that, we need to create a new folder and call that tags. Now any gameplay INI file containing gameplay tags in a particular format will automatically appear in the gameplay tag manager. These files can be created in any text editor and they just need to be plain text with the .ini end to it. So I've created one which I will just copy and paste here. And if I open this, so this is a states.ini gameplay tags for the different states our player can be in. I just open that. Make that bigger. So it has to follow this format. So the top line is script slash gameplay tags, gameplay tags list. And then to create each tag, again, this format, gameplay tag list equals, equals, and then tag. These are where you put the states, the tag. You can put a comment in here. So this is idle state. And to add extra tags, just basically copy and paste. And we'll call this state dot control. Now we can call this state dot chase. So once we've created that gameplay tag INI file, if we just save it, close it, it will not appear straight away. What you can do is sometimes just turn that off, turn that back on, and then can see it's found the file and it's loaded it up here yeah, so we've got chase idle patrol so that's the third way there is a fourth way of doing it but that requires C++ and defining the string as a user defined user defined string of course we'll, we'll leave that for today now all of these tags we can obviously use in our now a player. So we can take this game play tag container. We can add any tags we like here. So say we want the team to be team blue. Say we want him to have a weapon. Here's a gun and we'll say gun that's actually a rifle. So now we can add them here. And we can then, as part of our logic for driving the gameplay, check to see what tags are in here. So we can take the gameplay tag container and we can say, we can ask, does it has all tags? We create another container with all the tags. We can say, has any tag? Create a container with any tag. Or we can just say, has tag. And we can just enter the single tag here, rifle. And we can use this to then drive the logic of our game and interact with, with other parts of our system. So that's a very simple overview of gameplay tags, how we can use them to, for puzzles, how we can use them to set attributes on characters, and they are particularly useful in the gameplay ability system to drive, to drive events. 
So I hope that is helpful.